Hello everyone, welcome to my second video about the Mist FPGA computer. If you haven't watched my first video which gives you an idea of what FPGA computing actually is, I'll put a link down in the description where you can watch that video. This video is quite feature packed. What can you expect? I will give you an overview of the unit, all the interfaces, the buttons and everything else that you need to know. We will have a look at all the peripherals including input output storage devices as well as how you power up the unit and then I'll show you how you can set up the mist for the very first time we're gonna go with the Commodore 64 core because it's one of the easiest one it doesn't need any Kickstarter ROMs and so on it's very straightforward so I'll show you how you can download um, the firmware and the cores and how you flash the firmware and install the cores how to set up the SD card with games and demos and what formats are supported because with the Commodore 64 core you could load floppy images as well as do a memory injection which will speed up the loading times and at the end there's a bit of gameplay um, of me and playing my most favorite Commodore 64 game which is Last Ninja 2 Okay, so this is the Mist FPGA from the front. Let's have a look at these three LEDs. This LED is for the power, so you turn on the unit and the power LED goes on. The second LED here is core specific. That means every core does something slightly different. In the Commodore 64 core that we're using today, it will light up when you're accessing the floppy drive. And the third LED is the input output LED basically when you're accessing the SD card that LED will go on however it's also very uh, commonly used to show errors for example if you forgot to put a, a core on the SD card then this LED will also tell you that there's something wrong this is the SD card reader fairly standard stuff um, the biggest SD cards I tried was 16 gigabyte it might go bigger than that but 16 gigabyte is the largest one I tried and then we've got three buttons here first button resets the unit so it does that with all the cores the second button is to access the on-screen menu so it's the equivalent to pressing F12 on the keyboard um, quite useful if you don't want to uh, use the keyboard because you can just press the button here access the menu and then use the gamepad so it makes it a little bit more convenient and the third button is also FPGA core specific so every core does something slightly different by use when you press this button so here we're looking at the unit from the back on the left side we've got the power switch to turn on the unit then this is a USB interface for the power supply I'm using a basic uh, mobile phone charger that works really well in terms of uh, power draw it needs around 500 600 milliamps to um, power on and supply some of the peripherals so a mobile phone charger should work really well and then we've got four USB ports and what can you connect here all the peripherals that you need for example a USB mouse a USB keyboard a gamepad and so on then we've got a 3.5 millimeter audio jack so that's where you connect your speakers and then a standard PC VGA port for your monitor on the right side of the unit we have two old-school 9-pin joystick interface so that allows you to plug in authentic retro old-school joysticks from your Commodore 64, Amiga, Atari ST and so on that use 9 pins and plug them into here. I believe the Sega Mega Drive or Genesis controller can also be used so if you've, if you've got some real authentic uh, controllers and you want to use them with the Mist FPGA computer just connect them here. And on the left side of the unit we have an optional upgrade a MIDI interface. So this is something that the stock unit does not come with. You have to specifically order the upgrade and there's a little bit of uh, case modification happening. So best is to talk to the shop that you're ordering the Mist FPGA computer from and ask them about the cost and also the process of getting the MIDI interface into your Mist FPGA computer. Okay, so now I'm going to cover all the peripherals. What input, output and storage devices do you need to get started with the Mist FPGA computer? We already mentioned the SD card, so you'll definitely will be needing one of those. Next up is the power supply, so it's a standard mobile phone charger with a little 
USB connect at the back, just plug it in and off you go. You definitely need a mouse and a keyboard. You can plug in a standard USB mouse or keyboard. I'm using a cordless Logitech K400, which has a trackpad on its side. So it comes with a little USB dongle. Just insert that into the machine and makes it really nice and convenient because it doesn't have a lot of wires that get in the way. To play games, you definitely want to have a joystick or a gamepad. I'm using a USB gamepad. It's the Buffalo Classic USB gamepad. It's based on the Japanese and European uh, Super Nintendo or Super Famicom. And it's got a standard USB interface, so just connect it like that and you're good to go. Sound is also very important, so just plug in your speakers into the 3.5mm headphone jack. And finally, we need to connect a monitor. The Mist FPGA has a standard VGA output for an LCD or CRT monitor. Just connect it and tighten the screws to make sure everything is nice and secure. And that's it. Your Mist FPGA computer is ready to go. So we're going to move forward to the next section. Okay, here we are on my main PC. I've got an SD card ready to go and now I'm going to show you all the steps you need to do to get your MIST going for the first time. We're going to configure the Commodore 64 core simply because it's very straightforward. It doesn't need, need a kickstart ROM or any operating systems. It's one of the easiest cores to get going. Okay, I've got some resources here. The first thing we're going to do is go to the main MIST project website. That's what it looks like. If you click on MIST board you can access the uh, wiki here. It's got lots of information. And if you want to read up on something, that's the place to go to. However, you can also subscribe to my channel and I will do videos on basically everything that is on, the, on this, on this uh, resource. But let's get back out here and go to the missed binaries folder. Here we can get two things, cores and also firmware. We're gonna go to cores first and here are all the system and the cores and we're gonna go for the FPGA 64 core. So there's lots of information here. I highly recommend that the first thing you study is the readme file. It's usually very compact information that explains you all the main things. So here we can give some credit to Peter Wendrich who um, ported the FPGA or allowed people to port the FPGA uh, 64 uh, core which, was he, which he was working on and what else does it mention? It mentions, okay, we need at least firmware version 2015, July the 15th. So that's quite important. And that's why we're going to flash the firmware. I will show you how to do that. And then what else does it talk about here? It says it supports um, floppy images in the D64 image format. That's fairly standard and how you load them. But then it also mentions something about memory injection and I will explain to you what that means. So the main difference is that the loading time is faster. You can load it straight from the SD card and then just run the run command. So I will also explain to that, uh, that to you later. So let's get the core. This is the latest one. We need uh, this core. So we click on it, then go view raw, which will initiate the download and we're just saving it straight to the SD card. So here's my core. Now when you turn on the mist, it needs a default core.rbf file. So it ha there has to be one core, doesn't matter which system, but there has to be one core in the core.rbf file format, otherwise the mist won't load. You can then go into the on-screen menu and load other cores, but that's maybe a little bit too advanced. At the moment we're just going to stick for one core per uh, SD card. Okay, we got the core. So if we stick that into the mist and we turn it on, it will actually load the Commodore 64 core and boot the operating system. What we next need is go back here to mist binaries and we go into firmware and we grab the latest firmware, which is this, this one here from 2015 um, September. If you for some reason want an older version, you can click on old. These are all sorted by date. Um, so 2015 in August and then it goes back uh, 2014 and so on. But we're just going to go with the latest firmware. So we click on that file, click on view raw and save it straight to our SD card. And once again, we need to rename the file to 
firmware.upg. Otherwise, we won't be able to um, flash the firmware. Okay, and that's all we need. And now we need some games or some demos. Um, I bought Commodore 64 Forever, which comes with some games and some demos. So I'm just going to copy them across. But the games aren't too terrific, so I've put together a few other games, especially Last Ninja 2, which is my most favorite Commodore 64 game. And then I've got these two files. So these are the files that use memory injection. So we're going to copy that across, because I want to show you both methods of loading games, the games that are in the D64 format, as well as the games that are in the PRG format. But how do you, how do you create files in the PRG format. You need this program, um, Directory Master or DIR Master. Uh, I'll put the download link in the description. So you just open it and that's what it looks like. And you go open and you navigate. In my case it'll be on the... now I'm just going to go to the desktop. Um, and you grab a game in the D64 format. So I'm going to go with this one and that's what it look like and then usually you click on the game that has the biggest number here so Revenge of DOH plus whatever that is and then you right click and you go export and now you've got the PHG format so I'm going to export that to my SD card and you can see I've already had it there I did it before so I'm just going to over overwrite that file and there you go. So that's how you, um, that's how you export and create files in the PRG format. And now we are ready to rock and roll. Everything is on the SD card ready to go. So I'm gonna switch back to my MIST setup, and I'm gonna walk you through what we, what the next steps are. Okay, I just want to talk about the VGA output. Now VGA is usually 60 hertz. However, the Commodore Amiga and Commodore 64, a lot of games, maybe even the majority of games, are from Europe and run in the PAL, PAL standard, which runs at 50 hertz. So this means that not all monitors will function correctly with the MIST, especially the Commodore 64 has slightly off spec or timing, so you might have some issues. So to check your refresh rate, every monitor usually has some kind of a menu. So I'm just going to access the information mode, which is here under information. And you can see here the resolution 720 by 768. And it's got a refresh rate of 50 hertz. I'm just going to get out of this. Hold down a certain button that auto detects the uh, signal, auto adjusts the signal and you can see that it now shifts it up to the top so I now have to go back into the menu and adjust the image which is under position and then uh, vertical position so let's go down here and then you just hold that down and adjust the image yourself. Now on an old school CRT monitor that works a little bit easier compared to this but look it's the same process and now you've got a good picture that's uh, centered and um, looks nice and crisp and off you go. Okay so here's the SD card we just prepared so I'm gonna insert it into the mist and then quickly fire up the machine. So the boot time is very similar to the original Commodore 64 in terms of how long it takes. Um, I'm also just gonna switch over to my capture so we have a better quality of what's happening on the desktop. So this is the starting screen and what we need to do is press F12 to get access to our on-screen menu. You can also see that the game port, uh, the gamepad at this point will work and we can use that. So some of the things we can do here is turn the uh, scan lines on and off so it just looks a bit more retro and arcadey. I'm just going to leave him off because it affects the brightness a little bit. Joysticks on the original Commodore 64, sometimes games used port 1, sometimes games used port 2 for the joystick and here you can swap them around. Um, video standard, you can switch between um, PAL, the European standard and NTSC. I'm going to leave it at PAL at the moment. Um, here you can load your games which I'm going to show, show you shortly but let's go to the right and we have some other options here under firmware 
and core. So here we can change the FBA, FPGA core, load a different core from uh, within the core we're in now. So for example, you can put several cores on one machine as long as you have one file called uh, just core that will be loaded by default. Okay, and here it picks up that we have got the updated firmware. So we're just gonna hit update and flash the latest firmware. So that's not going to take too long and the machine will um, reboot after it's completed the firmware flash. Here we go. So we're going to go back into F12 and we have two options now. So I'm going to show you the fast way by using the memory injection. Uh, we're going to go with this game and off we go. So it's injected now and all we have to do now is type run. I might just turn the speakers off here. And, oh, they're turned off. That's good. Because I'm recording the uh, audio externally anyway, so I can just mix it into the video. So this is the fastest way of really loading uh, your games, but it's not compatible with all games, especially uh, games that continuously uh, load or where you have to swap floppy disks. Okay, I think we have to press space here. Let me just... So all these games have uh, crack, uh, cracking uh, titles and, and, and trainers and all sorts of things going on. Um, here we are in the game. So this is just an Arkanoid game. Where you just try to shoot these bricks. But yeah, it just shows you that that was fairly straightforward. You just had to flash the uh, firmware, make sure you have the latest version and get the right core for whatever, whatever system you have, check the readme file, it tells you how, how, how everything works or any, anything, anything that's different compared to uh, like a standard core. And in our case, we can either use memory injection for some faster loading or we can load D64 <laughs> images. Alrighty, so now you've got an option, you can reset the machine either through the on-screen menu, you can hit the reset button on the unit or you can power the unit off and on again so lots of options of how to do it alrighty let's play some last ninja my favorite game so let's mount it's under games last ninja side a and now it gets a little bit complicated with the keys um, the uh, quotes are up here and the star is here so it just takes a little bit of practice to get going and now's the time to make a coffee because unfortunately the loading times are quite substantial so we're just gonna cut forward okay it's finished loading so now we just have to type run and hit enter Okay, here we got some trainer. So yes, unlimited life, starting level is fine. And I think that's it. Let's press, see if I have to press something here. Oh, off we go. There we go, all ready to go. Okay, so the joystick is not working. So in that case, we might just have to swap the joysticks and see if it, yep, now it's all working, excellent. Please subscribe to my channel, share this video with your friends via Facebook, Twitter, Google Plus or Reddit, hit that like button and if you've got any comments or questions just leave them down below, I'm always eager to hear from you.